So we got a, a very special guest today. Uh, could you do us the honors and uh, go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Big Frank. They call me today. I go by my my first name. I don't go by my uh, my neighborhood name, which was uh, original Gangster Lepke from uh, West, West, the West Side area, Hollywood, uh, West Side Rebels. Um, um, uh, that was my neighborhood, and I I don't want to say gang because you know, like like the kids, you know, like when like when like when I got into the neighborhood, it was a neighborhood. We got in the neighborhood and. And it was different in the 70s. I got in in the early 70s, you know, I was backing it up. And finally, when I went to junior high and, you know, I, was, you know, I, I knew in sixth grade that when I get to junior high that things would change because there was not a lot of opportunity for education because the schools that I was going to, they were gang infested. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it was, it was about survival. You had to, you had to be a follower. You, you, you couldn't take your own. You know, some kids did, like somebody might be watching and go, oh, well, you know, that's a cop out, you know. Yeah. But I was like, I was drawn to the neighborhood. I liked the, the things I seen when I was coming up. I, I seen the money, I seen the people wearing, back in the day, those days, we, uh, we dressed it kind of like uh, the 30s and the 20s. We wore hard shoes, we wore, you know, Stacy Adams and the homeboys, we, you know, we really didn't have tennis shoes on too much. So when we went to school, Junior high, seventh grade, you know, I, I stole my grandfather's pants, which were pleated old timers. And yeah. I bought myself yeah. some Imperials. I went to the, uh, you know, to the uh, Tom McCann, got me some hush. But I watched, I seen what the neighborhood was wearing. And I, and I wanted to identify like that. You know, I wanted to identify. I wanted to be a part of something. I had no father in the home. I had my, my mother, a latchkey kid, raising a, you know, I ne but before I got into the gang or before I took a drink or anything, I, I realized that I was, I had an addictive personality. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I got addicted to was my neighborhood. You know, something about the writing on the wall and being from, you know, like, and everybody like, you, the, the, for the listener, you, you are youngsters that are out there nowadays. It was a lot different when you were coming up in the 70s and early 80s. It was a whole different ball game. So basically, for me, uh, yeah, I got joined. I joined the neighborhood when I got into junior high. I went. There was two. There was there was a few neighborhoods in the in the Bancroft Junior High, Hollywood High, Belmont, uh, 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 Marshall, in that little area. You know, Fairfax, L.A. High. So when in, in those pro prominent high, in those high schools and junior high schools, was uh, we, we, it was gangs. It was different back then. It's, it's like. I don't want to be like, oh, well, you, you know, like, like, yeah, I probably if I kept my mind right and 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 I wanted to get an education, but I, I wasn't into that because something in the home with my mother, I think, was lacking the love. My mother used to sell drugs. I think that was a big problem too. My mother was a dealer, so she sold, you know, she sold pounds of weed. Her, her you know, my her her the man, the men that she was bringing into the home, they were like one of them was a pharmacist, so he would get. He worked for a pharmacy, so before I even, you know, got got involved, you know, so yes, yeah, so I smoked weed with my mother they, when, when I was young. My mother's a hippie from the 60s. So when I was young, she gave me my, you know, I smoked weed with my mother and, and, and I, you know, and I, and she had, she, there was a lot of parties. She lived up in Hollywood, so they would party back in, it was like, the, it was coming in the early 70s coming out of the 60s. Yeah. So they were, hip, yeah, they were hippies, man. They took acid and they. They ate mushrooms, and they, it was a different ball game. So, and I couldn't find that love in, in in the home, man. I couldn't find love there. So I ventured out into the street, and I uh, and I seeked, uh, you know, the the the, the the you know the the structure of uh, of you know, like I looked up. I had older homeboys that you know they were driving lowriders with Craigers, seventy two Monte Carlos. The homeboys had bombs. They they had a, uh, you know, and, and and they dressed like gangsters, man. They dressed like. And I was drawn to that. I liked I, I liked that 1930s, 20s, uh, the way that uh, you know the the you know and I and, and, and you know I'm a, you know like they told me you're an old soul. Yeah, I like the old movies. I still watch Turner Classic movies. I try to find the Humphrey Bogart and James Cagney and you know Turner Classic movies. So you know the Stilo was a lot different when I was coming. Yeah. We uh, you know we uh, yeah. I, I, but I had to suffer a lot. You know there was a lot of suffering, and I had to. You know, like like I know you you based a show on uh, the youth authority and, and and going through the juvenile system and all that. And I happen to be a an alumni of all those places. You know, when I was young, I mean, 
because my neighborhood was small when I got in. 18th Street was big, and, and Clanton, that was our enemy, and then, you know, and then Temple, and there was a lot of older neighborhoods. Diamond was in, around my neighborhood, and, uh, and, and the Rampart Division, Hollywood Division, all that stuff. On the on the west side, man, I I, I experienced all that, you know. And how, how long after the, you started banging um, did it take you to start getting arrested and, and becoming initiated? I got arrested. I, I was getting arrested from the gate, from the Jump Street. Right when I started putting the khakis on and the and the and, and the Pendletons, they great, you know. Like I, I in the seventies, the thing we had to do is like 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 we were like like any little money we would get. You know, we would go to Greenspan's down in Southgate. Shout out to Greenspan's out there. Ivan and them, I know them well. Uh, we'd go to Greenspan's and get our ropa. And uh, and I started off fast, man. It was like, it, it happened quick for me. I I, I, uh, I started getting arrested. Uh, uh, first time I got arrested was I gave some girls some marijuana that I stole from my mother in sixth grade. So I started young. and I, And I got to experience the jail and I noticed that when I went to jail and my mother came and got me for a lot, for a little while, they were coming to get me out of jail because when you're a juvenile, they call your mother and she could pick you up. So that, I seen that right there was kind of like, I felt maybe uh, that that was giving, like, because my mother, she, while she was dealing and doing what she was doing, I wasn't getting no attention in the home. Mm. So what ended up happening with me was, I seen I got a little bit of attention. It was like a big deal with my mother and her little buddy and her, they came and got me out of jail, and and I think there was, like, you know, I didn't have a bad mother. I wasn't raised up a bad guy. They didn't whip my ass and abuse me and, you know, and, and, and put me in, in any positions where something bad was happening to me. It's basically, I seen that when I went to jail the first time, I probably looked at that like, wow, there's a way to get attention, you know? Yeah. That was like, you know, so I was thinking. But not that, oh, I'm going to keep going to jail to get attention. It was more like, you know, I was a fuck up. You know, I'm going to be yeah, honest, yeah. you know? Yeah, <laughs> right? Like, I'm going to be like, oh, <laughs> yeah. No, nah, I was, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to do bad things, man. I was, uh, you know, I wanted to, like, like I'm, if, you're, if the kids are watching, you know, you're going to, if you're drawn to that lifestyle, you will definitely be a follower, man. And I had to follow for a lot of years before I became a leader because I did become a leader. Well, you know, I, I wouldn't want to be, I ran my neighborhood, uh, you know, I'm a leader. Yeah, we, there's no, like, if you're from my neighborhood, there was no leaders. There was just individuals who were looked up to, you know? Yeah. And uh, um, I know you said you started getting arrested earlier. How how soon after you started, uh, your first arrest, did you start going to, like, juvenile hall and experiencing, like, longer terms of uh, well, okay, so my mother would pick me up, and then she got tired of it, mm. and then, uh, and then I figured that, uh, um, man, it was quick, man. So like, she would come. I remember I jumped in, like I, I, I robbed the store because there was like a, a market. I always yeah. remember, it. like right where those riots took off. That's where on Fairfax and Oakwood, I lived down in there. You know, right where the epic, the epic center of the 2020 riot that we just experienced about two weeks ago. Yeah. Or last week. Yeah, like 10 days, 12. Yeah, two weeks. And that's where I grew up, where they were looting everything down there on Melrose by Fairfax High School. I, so there's a, a store, like it was like a, it was a fruit market, but on the weekends they used to seal off another part. Where they sold liquor and it was like, a, like they had the vegetable thing open. But if I jumped over the thing and I got in there the first time and they, they had some money in the till, you know, they had like, got about a hundred and something dollars out of there. And then what I did was, I waited till the following week or maybe two weeks and I went back again and I jumped over and what happened was they were watching because they were, they, you know, they figured somebody yeah. jumped over and got the money. I jumped back over and I didn't get caught. So when I went the next time and I was there, there was no money. And then I was, you know, I'm like, what am I going to steal? There's nothing to steal. And I think that was the time that my mother didn't pick me up. And, uh, and I went to court, like I, I got a taste of it. I went to Central. I went to uh, East Lake down there in, uh, you know, down there in uh, Lincoln Heights, to buy, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah, right, right where, uh, down from General Hospital. I, I experienced that. I went to Girl CD, which was, they call it Girl CD because there was a unit on the girls' side where they yeah. had, they kept us, you know. I, I remember I first went there, and uh, I liked the feeling, man, because I'm from a neighborhood, and, and really nobody never heard of my neighborhood. And I went in there, and, you know, and then I had, you know, the, the, uh, upon entry, and the Unit R, I think I got them up in Unit R with somebody. 
and it was the fear, man. And I was addicted to the like not the fear, but the, the, the adrenaline. Yeah, yeah. Of going in there and going there was there was neighborhoods that didn't get along with me. And I'm gonna tell you, I was a scared little guy, man. I was scared, but I wanted to fit in and I wanted to belong. Yeah. And I wasn't scared to fight. I wasn't scared to fight. I learned in my neighborhood that you had to fight. I had to take an oath, man. We take an oath when we get into our barrio that. Like if you're a youngster and you're thinking about getting into a gang and, and something's going on in your head to where you feel that that's what you want, you're going to, if you're I'm like, I'm not going to tell you like, oh, go for it and do it. Like everybody has to experience what they have to experience in life. And for me, I was experiencing that and I could have saved my, my parents and a lot of people, a lot of grief and pain. And, and I'm going to let you know, man, it's only as a miracle that I stand, I'm not as a man, but as a miracle that I talk in front of you on this with uh, cricket right here on the, on this uh, Zoom podcast, whatever it is, that I'm letting you gentlemen know that uh, all you youngsters, man, that uh, you know what? Some of you are going to have to go down that road, and some people are going to have to die. I'm going to be honest, because when 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 you join a neighborhood and you get involved in things like this, you're signing up for a, you're signing up for a, 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 your your life to get taken. Mm -hmm. And uh and, and yeah, I started doing a lot. I went, you know, I, at that time I probably I even went in a few times. I had to lie about my age, and I, I ended up going to the county when I was 16. I experienced, Damn. yeah, because what I did was I, I lied about my age. I told them I was 18, thinking that, you know, that, 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 that I don't know why I did that. Because then I called my mother and she ended up calling in and saying that I was a juvenile. They pulled me out of the county and put me back in juvenile hall. I was trying to see if, because I, I had a homeboy that was looking out for me, an older homie. And he's like, hey, if every next time you go in and your mom don't want to pick you up, just call my number. They're going to give you a phone call and I'll bail you out. So I thought maybe... Yeah. I could pull that one, you know, and I, you know, they came after like fucking two days. They came in there. So I got to experience the LA County jail when I was 16 and I like, man. And when I, when I was 16, I always remember my first 16 years old going into that County, man, it was different. There yeah. was no jumpsuit. There was no, it ended up getting the, the not, not the two piece, but they end up getting like the, the a gas station. Yeah. Suit. Yeah. Yeah. We had that. And then when I went in, it was like, you know, they have frajos and, and uh, I lost you. Are you still there? Yeah, oh, my bad. Go. No, yeah, you're yeah. good. All right. So, so what happened? Like, like I'll tell you a little story. So, so I experienced that. Then what ended up happening? So, so I started doing more GTAs and burglaries. Like I was a burglar. I like to break. You know, during, you know, I would ditch school and I would go knock, you know, knock on the people's door. Me and my other homeboy, and, and we burglarized. Because yeah. back in those days, there was a lot of, you know, they, they had the, the weed, the, the weed of choice back then was the, the tie, the tie yeah. stick. And, the, and that was expensive, you know. And we liked to smoke that tie weed. So it was like, back in those days, man, it was like 250 an ounce. And that's a lot of money in the 70s, yeah. 250. And we, and we would, like, we would want good weed. We would smoke that. And then, I, and then we were taking Reds and, and Nebutal. See, every, all the drugs were different back then. We would drop acid on the weekend. You know, we were on that ass at seven hundred, seven hundred, not seven, seven dollars and fifty cents a hit. The four-way yeah, yeah. window pane, we were getting that. We were taking that acid, and then it was fun, man. I'm not gonna lie, like, like I'm not gonna, like when I think back, I'm like, damn, I had some good times. But it started, it started, uh, 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 you know, it's like a train, man. I was adding cars on. It was like a, yeah. a train. I was just, you know, my addiction got really bad, man. It was like. You know, then the neighborhood, well, you know, it got to the point with me where, where I was doing it just for the, that happened down the line later. I shot, I shot heroin my first time I shot when I was young and I did it to just, you know, like, cause I knew the other youngster homeboys, they weren't doing it. And I wanted to be, cause I had some veterano homeboys from my neighborhood that, that they would do that in the cut, but they wouldn't tell a shit. It was like, it was off bounds. That was out of bounds. You know, like if we tried to venture into that little, you know, realm, you yeah. know, like I had homeboys that, that cared for us. They would be like, nah, you ain't gonna. And then every now and then you find the homeboy that's Malia's in the morning and you want to find out what the fuck's going on. So, you know, you're like, yeah, I got, you know, cause I, you know, I was a youngster, you know, I was one of them little young homies. I had money, you know, I kept money in my pocket, you know, before I started, you know, using heroin and shit. And uh, I had, a, you know, I, I, you know, one of the homies, I'm like, look, man, you're sick, you know. And then we, back in those days, we had to drive down to Bonnie Bray and uh, six. Yeah. Down over there by uh, by by uh, uh, Columbia Cyclones 18, they had good heroin. It was twenty five dollars a spoon back then. There was no fucking five dollar, ten dollar little thing. Atari, you bought a fucking cuchara. 
Yeah, it was yeah. called a quarter teaspoon. They were $25, man. And that spoon would get four people fucked up. And people were dying from that dope. That was Damn. That wasn't coming from Mexico. I think it was coming from like, I don't know, it was like European dope. It was coming from, it wasn't China white, but it was some dope coming from, probably, it wasn't coming from Mexico. But then we were getting that one that was coming from Mexico. That shit was, and that was that fucking, that powder, man. It was, and that, but see, everything was different, you know, back then. It was like, you felt the rush. You know, nowadays, you know, they, they doing that shit. Like, you know, I, mean, I work in the field. I work in recovery, man. So, yeah. I study that shit to a T. I got like, I got my whole investment in my life of, of experience on the guy with the drugs and the pinta and all that. And I also got invested. I almost got four years of college studying the criminal behavior and Damn. and the psychology of the of the addiction, man. Because because it's an addiction to be from a gang. It's an addiction to go to the youth authority. I was addicted to that shit. I love YA, you know. How old were you when you uh, when you got to YA? I hit YA after I hit 18. I went on a burglary. The judge was tired of seeing me. My first, uh, so let I was a small one. I, they gave me a, they gave me three years. I ended up doing the whole three years. You know, I I, I could have got out in 18 months, but you know, when you're time bombing yeah. and you're in YA, you know about that. You got. What I had a three, four. Did I had you hit? A, huh? What institution did you hit? In YA? What institution did you hit in YA? I hit SRCC and then I went up north. I, 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 w I was eligible because I had no escapes, no arsons. So I got to experience the fire camp up north. All and right. that's when, uh, yeah, there was a, the, 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 you know, it was a little bit of Norteño, Sureño thing going, but I'll tell you like this, because before I went to YA, I went to a boys, to those boys homes. Mm -hmm. I remember I had a conversation with you. I was saying that back when I was going to the boys homes in the early 70s, Circle Y, Boys Ranch. Uh, I didn't never hit Boys Republic, the one in Chino, but I went to St. John's in, uh, in Whitewater. I went there. I stood there a year. So basically when I was going through placement, I noticed that a lot of, nor like, northerners, uh, Sacramento, and they were down here, and, and there was no tripping. So for a while, there was, you know, no tripping. When I hit YA, it, was, it started up. It was already... There was already, they, 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 they were implicating that, there's a, you know, they split it in half the South. If you, if you were one, one, like if you were on half of Bakersfield was the North. They, yeah, like they let you know right when you can go in. They go like, yeah. okay, if the homie, if they're from Delano, they're Nortenos. If they're from, you know, uh, 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 Chiques or something uh, South of, you know, so they, they had to explain all that. But then again, it was like, it was like, I, I went up North to a camp and, uh, yeah. And then uh, I refused to work because it was a military camp. Ben Lohman up in the Santa Cruz Mountains. It was a military camp. I lasted a little while. And I got tired of slaving for the, I don't want to, you know, be like political or nothing. Yeah. But we have an old statement. We go, we got to get tired of slaving for the white man, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get tired of slaving for law enforcement, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was like, and they were like, you know, they, you know, and then they, and then they, and, we, and there were some homies in there like, yeah, yeah. Because in a way, when you like, Kiss the fucking who does that? And why that ain't good either. So I just got tired. So I told the yeah. uh, I told the plug I told him one day because they had us fucking doing some heavy work like dip, dip, digging trenches or something. It was like eight hours on you know. And the, but it saved me. Why saved my life because I went in there like I was kind of like out of shape. I was a little bit you know. And what I did was you know when I went in I was starting because I was a fat kid you know. Yeah, I was fat when I started doing the YA thing. I started getting in shape, and so but I got tired of just you know working hard. And I told him, "Hey, what if I refuse to work? What what happens then?" He goes, "We we we fucking cuff you up. You go down to Santa Cruz County Jail, and you don't want to go to the Santa Cruz County Jail because there's nothing but Northerners in there, and it ain't gonna be. And when you guys you guys from South, he was trying to like you know yeah, I thought it was you. a challenge, and I threw the shovel down. I go, you know, I refuse to work." Like, I wanted to go to the fucking Santa Cruz County Jail. And I went up in there, man, and I and right when I got into the little module, that little thing, you know, and, then, you know, they put me in a cell with some woods, and the woods were like, hey, you know, in the morning, you know, it's, you know, there's like a dude from Watsonville, another one from, yeah, there was mostly Watsonville up there. Uh, yeah. Watts, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Watsonville, Via Norte or something. So what had happened was basically when they let me out in the morning, I got him up with this dude, uh, Muggsy, me and him got him up, and then his homeboy Bird, I threw down with Bird, and then uh, I, like I fought for like a day or two, and then and then I I was you know I'm not gonna roll it up you know so 
I got down, like, you know, because I'm in YA. So, you know, when you're in YA, you got to get them up here. Yeah. Like, it's, you know, so these dudes kind of respected me and they let me stay. And, you know, I ain't going to lie. Like, oh, you kicked it with the North End. You know, after a while, you know, you, they see you, you got heart, you get them up. And, and it's another respect level that you gain. Yeah. So yeah. I kicked it, you know, you know, I like, I didn't share, you know, I don't want to be like, oh, you know, well, did you drink out of the coffee cup? Maybe I did. I don't know. I mean, I might have took a sip of coffee. I, I'm going to keep it real. Yeah. You know, I you know, but it was just us. You know, they had no negros in there. The negros were separated. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, they, 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 you know, even though that we look at them like, oh, they're Nortenos or this or that, they're still Raza, you know? Yeah. You know, yeah. that's why we're, hey, just to say for the listener, that's why we're in the situation we're in because we label everything. There's too many people that are labeling, man. You know, I, I, I believe in solutions today, not problems. And the reason why that the society society that we're in and, and all this shit that we're going through that you know that we see in the streets and what's happening today is because we put labels on everything instead of people getting up in the morning and be like hey i'm just gonna be good i'm gonna try to help somebody because that's what i'm in i'm in the helping business today yeah, you know I, I i i help kids i help individuals you know so as, if this is going out you could you know you give these guys my instagram man and if they dm me and you're struggling i definitely want somebody to DM me, and I'm, I'm in Orange County, and I, and I have houses, and if you're young and you're, and you're on drugs, and something's going on with you, and you're not getting along with your family, or, or you're just looking for a way out, man, just DM me on my Instagram, man, and... Uh, yeah, well, we'll put that in the uh, subscription uh, below. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, let them know. And uh, um, so, how long did you stay in uh, Santa Cruz County? Oh, Santa I stayed County? like a month and a half, and then I went up to NRCC, which was enough. It was cracking up in NRCC. But what had happened was when I went up to NRCC, they had a Sureño dorm. Yeah. So right, yeah. So right when we got up to NRCC, it was like, uh, yeah, they knew what was up because you know the Huras from there. Like we ain't trying to tell them shit. We trying to sneak into the Norteño dorm so maybe we could get you know you know because that's that's the mentality I had. I'm like you know keep my mouth shut and if I could boobop a motherfucker you know that's that's where i was at like back then it was all about you know you know it was all about getting them up bro you know you're young i didn't give a fuck when i was young i i, I was down to even boobop with the homies you know yeah and uh, but, uh, uh yeah and how long were you there in uh in our um we stood in 45 days you know they put me in the in the sureno door hey but sometimes the homies would be like hey we can't eat the food tonight because because what they would do is they would hide those dudes and they wouldn't tell them what dorms were going through. But every yeah. now and then you see a head peek out and they'd be like going like this. Uh -huh. And then we had to tell all the homies like, hey, nobody can eat that shit now. Because you know what they did to that yeah. shit. Fitting in that shit. So, yeah, you had to be like, it was a, hey, 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 it was a little, like, it was like, man, what a way to live. And now that I think back on it, I'm like, oh, that's a fucked up way to live. Yeah. You know, like, because, like, what would happen is, like, they wouldn't tell those dudes what dorms were coming in, and they had them behind something. You ever go, like, if anybody's watching this, you know, if you go to some of those yards right now, there's just a tray slot, and you grab yeah. the tray. You don't see the line. It ain't like Tehachapi. You just, you know, I think they even had, like, that in some Some spots, you know, like, uh, yeah, most of them are, like, closed in. I don't know. That's yeah. how most, like, the last yard yeah. I was on, I'm trying to think. Yeah, even Ironwood was like that. Right? Yeah, Ironwood was like that too. That was the last yard I did my last in 2008. I did my last violation. And uh, I so stood, after I stood, in, I, I stood. I I didn't answer your question. I stood in NRCC like 40 days. You know, no, a little bit over a month, and then, and then they shot Boxer from Venice. He came down from Tracy. And yeah. this is how we could distinct, this is how the, what, uh, we could tell a, ho a homie from a northerner because the Norteños, you, they, would, uh, they would give them like tennis shoes, kids, and if you came from down south, you had state boots. You had black, black paroli-looking shoes. They were, they were yeah. looking like biscuits, the black biscuits. When I went to SRCC, they gave us black shoes. They were like, like you got those black shoes, man. And I was like, you know, uh, you know, like, so, like, like, if, you know, like, if you went to the county, you know, you seen those black shoes, you know, the homie came from Hawaii, like, that was like a, a staple, it was a stepping stone, like, so I seen homeboy walked in, and he had the black shoes all hooked up, and I was like, you know, because everybody in NRCC had tennis shoes, I probably had tennis shoes, too, my black shoes were probably still on my property, they gave me homeboy in, 
And I seen he had some black shoes, and I, I'm like, hey, homie, what's up? Uh, where, where'd you come from? Tracy. I'm going to TS. They had me up at Tracy doing, I don't know, they had him up there for 90 days. So me, I, me and Boxer from Venice, we, he came back. I don't know if he's still alive, but he, he was a rider back in the days. We rode the bus down to TS back in, yeah. uh, this was like 82, 81 or 82. We rode the bus, and I finished up my uh, my rest of my three years. I had to do the, uh, you know, you know, for refusing to work. I probably got six months added on. But, that, like, I was getting out. Like, I did, you know, I did, like, you know, you know, a few months in SRCC, and then I tried to last like like close to a year in that fire camp, and I refused to work. I went in that county jail for a little while, and yeah. then I did the rest yeah. of it in TS. Yeah, I ended up. And and I was up, I was YTS back then. I was up there with Henry Tillman. He fought Tyson in the Olympics and knocked him out. I was up there with Jaws from San Fernando. These are all reputable homies, man. Uh, yeah. uh, Aaron Yukitas. With the, one of the Yukitas brothers, he 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 uh, he was a kickboxer. He ended up dying in the, in the struggle Damn. from from uh, from uh, not from uh, from Pacoima. Shout out to my boy Aaron Yukitas, resting in peace. Rest in peace, Pacas. And then uh, and, and it was like it was OGs up in there, man. There was like 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 blown from weed boss and like all these dudes that I'm mentioning, man. They're probably either they're doing the right thing or they're in the grave or they're up in fucking uh. uh, uh they could be an ADX or, or, or the Bay, man. Like, yeah. these were dudes, yeah, these are like reputable camaradas that, that I did time with, man. Even from uh, Monte, there was a lot of homies from Monte. All the OGs from Monte, they were probably there when I was there. Yeah, hell yeah. I remember, I, like, you know, shout out to Willie. Give Willie a shout out. Yeah, right, well, shout out to Wicked Willie. That's the boy right there for sure. Right, we got to shout him out, man. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be doing this, you know? Oh, hi, that's, that's, that's the fam right there, for real. The fam, and, uh, yeah, we shout him out. And the Cefito, man. I did time with the Cefito back and tell it all, Avenal, man. We got caught up in there, but it was a trip. See, they talk shit about Avenal, but uh, when I went to that night, they put, I was on two yard, and that was like, that was a, that's when the structure was trying to get. They were yeah. trying to build their line, the structure. Yeah, yeah, the Bulldogs, they, yeah, they, they got at me. They're like, oh, they were supposed to be cool with them. I'm like, fuck, those are the fools that were, like, hunting me down in Hawaii. Like, oh, Fresno, Ford. I'm like, nah. They're like, oh, we're cool with them. I'm like, fuck <laughs> that shit. I know I'm not cool with them. All of a sudden, then yeah. I knew, see, I seen the, the structure was changing, man. Not the northern structure, our structure. I was noticing, yeah. like, at, at around that time when I was, you had already been in the pen a whole bunch of times. Solid Dad, Folsom, you know, fucking up and down the stage. Solano, you know, I've been to like a few of the old ones. I haven't been to too many of the new ones. I've been to, you know, I made my rounds. I opened a few reception centers. I cracked ground in Delano when that opened. I, I busted that ground. I busted Supermax in Wayside. I was one of the first hundred off that bus over there. I opened facilities, you know. I don't want to say that like, oh, I'm a big guy or nothing. That don't mean shit, but I'm just saying that yeah. I was, you know, I participated in, in, in what it is, the cause, you know. I did a lot of I participated the tattoos I have. I, I know I earned them, you know. I earned them. I just didn't put them on, man. I took, I took some heat, you know. I I, had, I took I took heat. I threw down with the fucking hudas when they said, "Hey, so I was gay. We're gonna it's on and cracking with the placa." So you know, then the first chance you get, and that that happened to me at an older age. Like this day when I was young, it was like we were fighting each other. But as I started getting older, the homies were like, "Nah, it's like." You know, when the wheelock comes around, homie, you, and it says to board up in this motherfucker, you know, you know, and I'm letting you youngsters know, you guys ain't going to like it over there on the gang module side. That gang module changed. I I, I I, was in the gang module when I was on the 3,000 floor in the Condado. That fucking gang module changed, man. You kids are going to get up in there and you're going to be like, fuck, we should have just listened to our fucking parents, man. That's what's going to happen to you guys, man. I know. Because at the end, at an older age, mature, and used to all this, I was in that fucking cell praying, man, that these youngsters don't decide that they want to fight the Huras the next day. Because you're not going to win when you fight the Huras in the county. Yeah. They're going to fucking go in there. You're going to get a few licks in. You're going to hold your mattress in front of you and try to. But at the end of the day, you're going to get fucking sapped, tased, and beat and yeah, pulled they... out. Yeah. And I don't know if you motherfuckers, I've been tased, man. I know it ain't no. Like, yeah, that's a wake up call, man. That fucking. You ever been tased, Minnie? How about you, Brad? Yeah. To Brad's been taste. Tell him how'd you feel? Double time. Yeah, that shit ain't no joke. And then they turn it up, and you're like, "Fuck, man!" That's 
laugh. And they laugh. They love that shit. They Fucking laugh. you. They like that. Yeah, that ain't good. They like doing that. I got these guys right here. See these guys that I'm doing the um we're yeah. doing it. You're doing this here, but I got these two gentlemen here, man. They're twins. They're older guys, Smitty and uh, Bazaro. And if you guys ever, you know, shout out to Big Lucky from Santa Monica. I got a, We got a podcast, The Hard Luck Show, you know, and I don't know. You go in there somewhere. You, so you get on the internet, you can find any fucking thing. Right? Yeah, I'll put a link to that, too, on the, on the description, for sure. Yeah, Hard Luck Show, G. Lepke, all that shit. And, oh, yeah. I, you know, and, 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 and like, I don't want to like, 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 we're here. This is your show, bro. I don't want that other shit. You can let them know about that if they've seen it. I'm not here to advertise that. I'm here to let the youngsters know. My purpose talking to you is that if, if you've got a thousand kids watching this and two or three kids decide, fuck, man, this is an OG and he's telling the truth. And I am telling the truth. I work with honesty today. I want you kids to fucking know, man, that I care for you, man. I don't want you to go through what I went through. I got dragged through the mud, man. I ended up on fucking Skid Row. You know, I wasn't a hell of a baller with all kinds of shit. I was down there, man. And you guys, you kids ever been down to Skid Row? I was down there for years with shit running down my leg with one shoe on, man. And I, and I didn't have a homeless problem, but I wouldn't be in the tent. I'd be in front of the tent on a crate. Lying yeah. to you to tell you I'm not fucking homeless, but I'm down there every fucking night trying to scrape up enough money to get a $2 vodka and a $5 bag of dope, man. And that's what my gang banging. That's what at the end result of my gang banging, I ended up on fucking Skid Row homeless with nothing, with not a pot to piss in the window to throw it out. Yeah. Let's get into that a little bit. How how um how did you go from like active and and in prison to like out on the streets, like getting into right. like the Skid Row? Like how how did how did you make that transition? How did how did that happen? I mean, I made that transition when I got addicted to heroin, and, and, and for a while, my neighborhood, it was like the Klingermans. Mm. We, had, we had Carga in our barrio like that. But yeah. I, I, after a while, when the neighborhood has Carga like that, good things all come to an end. And so what happened was the whole structure of the Chiva and the cocaine and all that, around the Belushi days and the 80s and all that, that came to a stop because they, they said, you know, you know, the law enforcement goes in there and they figure shit out. Yeah. And then you got a lot of my homies out there. Sinaloa, I got a lot of homies from Mexico. You know, half of my neighborhood, they're Salvadoreños, and the other half are Mexicanos. So my homies yeah. would go down there to their uncle's ranches. And then I had a click in Compton. So all that, that the two fam familias from my neighborhood was the Gomez family and the Ortega family and their, their uncles. And you know how it is, the, the Mexican families, man, they're big. And they would yeah. come back with that fucking, you know, with, with that tar, man. So we were laced up with tar for a good minute. I ended up getting strung out and doing scandalous shit, smoking crack and, you know, like, 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 I, I you know, everything you, that, 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 you know, you know, everything, everything, you know, and I, and, 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 and I got checked a few times. I had some homies pull me aside and be like, hey, man, man you know, what? you know, this ain't, this is not the good approach, man. You know, you know, you're a role model in the hood. You know, you're like, what I mean by role model is I got younger homies that are looking up to me because I've done time. Yeah. Man, and I would get out and I, I'd start the race off. The race would always be start off real cool. And you got to remember something that I, 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 I used a lot of drugs. I used to help my mother sell drugs at one point. So I was doing that. And then my mother got clean and sober. My mother went to NA and AA and she started fucking around with Danny Trejo and Artie Martinez and, and, uh, and, and Emilio Rivera. You know, Emilio Rivera for Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My mother was like laced with them. She, she got. She had like my mother, you know. She was helping. She was helped in the community too. She was a drunk counselor for the women in L.A. Dope. Oh, so yeah. my mother started getting clean. Yeah. And so what she did was, <clears throat> she gave me a little game on it. And, you know, it took me a long time. I, I, you know, I walked into my first NAAA meeting in in uh, 1983, and I swear to God, man, Danny Trejo and them used to tell me, man, they used to say, you know, because I was young, and Danny would take me aside and be like, man, you're not ready yet, man. You're gonna have to go back to prison. And I started going to a lot of drug programs, you know, like Cry Help in North Hollywood, Impact and uh, Impact, so, uh, uh, Impact, uh, and, uh, and, and, and you know, like I'm gonna let you know, the stepping stone for me was I'm gonna let you know a situation when I was in ENF in East Lake Juvenile Hall, man. And I always say this, I like I'm trying to write this in a novel. I, I'm trying to put a memoir out, and I'm gonna there's gonna be a chapter of exactly what I'm about to let the listener know. It's uh, um. Uh, so we're so 
And they brought a prison program in there from Chino, man. And and, and I always felt that the government, like, if, I'm not going to explain, but why do you take these dudes, you know, that got frows in their pocket, shined up shoes, creased up pants, you know, and put them in with active gang members and show them slides of, you know, how you come to the uh, guiding center and they showed you how Palm Hall was with the four yards. Like, we were enlightened by that. We saw yeah. that. And when those fucking prison structure, whatever, they're, they're scared. They weren't scared straight. They were like, after they laced us with that, it's like the whole talk of that evening was like, man, it's time to go to Chino and put those fucking Bonnaroo's on and get them frows in our pocket. You know, so I always yeah. felt, why did the, like, 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 who did that? The community, the government? Like, who would put dudes like that and show them pictures of, fucking the guiding center is it was like i don't want to be like it's a setup but i always looked at that because because that's where i think i made a decision when i was <clears throat> in east lake because i was still looking at like camp time and i don't think i had been to y.a yet and i saw that and i felt you know hey i i, I need to get to like i need to bypass y.a and just go straight to the joint yeah you know, so I felt like, why would they, then later on, like, I'd be laying in my cell, and I, I would I would think back to that. Because what happens when you're locked up and you're incarcerated, you have a lot of time, and a lot of shit goes through your head when you're thinking. And I was remember laying on the bed, I, I, that would always come to my head, like, man, like, where did this all happen? Because at some point, you get a little remorse, like, fuck, I want to change, I don't want to be in it, because it ain't no joke, Buck Dancy, for the system, man, we're all, like, even the fucking uh, uh, chaplain, when he'd see me, because they have some OG chaplains that came to juvenile hall. I see it. They would follow me, the chaplain from juvenile hall. I'd be like a trustee on the tier or something, doing the through shot thing with the broom. And I'd be like, hey, Frank, hey, Henry, how you guys doing? They're like, oh, fucking Lepke, you're still bug dancing for the system? And that would hit me like, like man, I, the, I, these guys been following me since I was a Mocoso, right? Yeah. Hey, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, the skid row trans trans uh, uh thing, the transformation. Um, my homeboys basically, uh, you know, like like I just like I, I got grimy, bro. I, I I got I got sloppy. I got grimy, and it had to do. I don't want to be like, oh, blame the drugs. Yeah, heroin. Heroin is a is a cruel drug. Yeah, and um, yeah, I know my my grandma was a right. There's a yeah. Hey, hey, Smitty, go 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 run down, run down there and grab me a water, bro. I drink a lot of water, man. Yeah, the old timers yeah. told me in the Pinta, they said, walk slow and drink a lot of water. So I keep water <laughs> in my system. I yeah. remember I was at some day. So let me tell the youngsters. So you guys ain't as fortunate because when I was coming up, the dudes that were giving us our game, we had to listen to and they And they were telling me exactly what I'm telling you. Like some good guys got in my ear and they're like, you're a good kid, man. Why do you want to do this for the rest of them? You're like, they weren't getting at me like, take the night. Well, yeah, you know, every now and then, because you got to participate. Yeah. So there's going to be some good with the bad. Like, I'm not going to tell you all the older homies told me, you know, there's some point where the homies were like, here, here's a bone crusher. And that motherfucker was like, went from my waist down to my foot. Thanks, man. Yeah. And, you know, and then, and then I'm like, what do I do with this? And they're like, you fucking bury it. And I'm like, bear, what do you mean bury it? Like, I think <laughs> I'm just going to put it under my mattress. They're like, no, we're going to give you a fucking chisel, some bondo, and some, and you're going to fucking, well, you're blasting that in the wall. And I'm like, well, I didn't know what the fuck, like, I was scared, man. When I first went to Folsom, I'm like, put in the wall, like, what the fuck? Yeah. The homie's like, oh, the you know, my cellie was like, I'm going to show you what we got to do, you know. Yeah. They shoot you a little papel of the speed. Like, back in them days, the speed was different, man. It wasn't all this shit they got now. It was fucking, the speed, you could fucking hustle, man. You could do a line of that speed. And it had us in there. I remember, they, they, you know, they, they gave us the knife, they gave us the speed, and they gave us a radio. I mean, but we had to put the knife away, man. You're going to, if you listen, if you're young and you get up to that level four yards, you're going to have to participate. It's all yeah. about participation. You're going to have to study the Aztec law, man. They want you to know that to a T, man. I learned, see, there was some good influence when I was in the joint. I don't know these youngsters are going, oh, well, that's what I want. That's, no, you don't want that. You can learn that support your fucking family, man. Pay some yeah. bills. Because when you get up there now, I heard the last I checked, they ain't doing it old school, man. They're on some new school shit, and it ain't cool, man. And let me let me uh, ask, because one thing that uh, um that I know when it comes to like, drug addiction and, and drug abuse, there's yeah. a certain point where you kind of look at yourself and you don't even recognize yourself anymore. You're doing a lot of you're doing a lot of different things that you 
that you would do and and uh, you're handling yourself a, a certain way that you're like, man, I wouldn't be like this a few years ago. Was there a point where, where you where you got to that to that uh, point in your life where you're like, damn, how the fuck did I get here? Yeah, because what ended up happening with me was uh, I have a good friend. His name's Esteban Oreo. What he would do is, you know, I, I've known him for a while, man. And him and uh, I used to live with Cartoon, man, back back before they were, you know, before they took the initiative to to, you know, get everything out there that they do, man. And they, you know, I, yeah. I was living with them in the struggle, you know, they, you know, they, they were doing a lot of their hustling in Hollywood. And I was also, even though I knew the gang thing, I also knew the other world too, because I used to work clubs and I get out pretty big, you know, you got to remember I'm six foot four. And when I was doing time in the penitentiary, there was iron. So I stood on that iron. That was like my, my go-to thing. I didn't use drugs in the pen. Somebody got in my ear and they're like, hey, man, you're a good kid. Don't use drugs while you're here. Drugs will get you fucked up. And I seen a lot of homeboys die behind the heroin. So I, I didn't use when I was in the joint. Occasionally, I would drink a little bit of that white lining and smoke a lanyo. But I didn't have a problem with the fucking, the meth or the heroin or nothing. Now, you know, on a, on a blue moon, I would, somebody shoot me a papel, you know, for the, I do it on the weekend, you know, but I wouldn't pay for it. Yeah. I was more into getting tacos and working out and eating good spreads, you know. I would, yeah, you know, I, I was into like, you know, like I, I you know, because in there, you, they're watching you, man. Yeah. It ain't like a neighborhood thing. You got, you got all barrios. Other neighborhoods are like watching you. And if you're a representative for your neighborhood, you got to hold down that, that thing, man. You got to be like, you know, a representative, you know. And I represent my neighborhood, man. I would die for my neighborhood anyway. So I was doing, yeah, when I was living with a, a cartoon in Buena Park back in the. In the early 90s, man, I would get out from the violations and they would lace me because these dudes are like, you know, they're in the game. Like, they're doing, uh, you know what they do? Shout out yeah. to Cartoon, Esteban, and uh, DJ Mug. Shout out, to, shout out to the dudes I roll with today, Soul Assassins. Yeah, hell I'm an yeah. Original, I'm an original Soul Assassin. And uh, they would see me fucked up, man. They would actually see me. Uh, they see the transformation of me coming out all yoked and... You know, it's starting off good, and then little by little, I'd be sneaking. You know what I'm saying? I'd be doing sneaky behavior, and then I'd be, uh, what do they call that when you, uh, uh, not just, I should say, like, disintegrate, but I would, like, my, my weight would go down. And, yeah, 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 you'll see. And then, but, I, but when you're on drugs, you don't notice it. You don't see it. And what Esteban was doing was he was documenting me. Oh, shit. Because I didn't give a fuck. I'm like, he's like, hey, you don't mind if I document you with that like fuck no I, I don't give a fuck you know like hey you the homie g yeah it's like yeah i just want you yeah because this shit's crazy what you do left key it's crazy like you from rebels and you over here in crazy riders hood in the momo you yeah. from the neighborhood and you down like i'm in the enemy neighborhood motherfuckers do a trip out like <clears throat> i had my homeboys roll through one time they're like what are you doing down here like we're gunning with these fools and you're down here kicking it i'm like i'm a <laughs> drug addict i don't give a fuck i'm gonna get you know like like, I go to the motherfucker that's running that neighborhood and be like, hey, homie, I'm down here. Like, hey, you know, let me let me participate down here, you know? And they were yeah. whacking their own homies. Like, I seen a lot of like, then I thought, man, I got to get out of there. They start killing their own homies. And maybe I'm, I'm next, you know, yeah. over drugs and shit, you know? <laughs> like, I go anywhere, homie. I even been over there in the month there a few times trying to cop shit, you know? Like, anywhere <laughs> they tell me the dope is good, I'd be like trying to find it. <laughs> I remember I used to go to them Klingermans back in the day and fuck with Shorty and them, man. Oh, yeah. Hey, the Klings is bad, too. I remember the yeah, first time. Yeah, I remember, man. Hey, that was the only place, like, $35 for a fucking half a gram. Or, and that dope was good in the Klingermans. I remember that dope. We used to get on that uh, on that 60. I don't know how we used to go, man. We used to steal it. We'd always roll up in there in a stone car. They used to tell us, when you drive in, you got to click the light a certain way. It was like, like, they had a rule when you pulled into the street. Like, we knew it all, like. The first time they like surround it, like where you got to from? We're like, hey, homie, we're just all right. Next time you drive through, you gotta hit the hit the light one one long, two shorts or some shit. I don't know. That <laughs> was a long time ago. <laughs> but um, yeah. So I started, yeah. So they were documenting that, and and then like I'd get out. So this is like like a little like a light would go on. I would get out, and Esteban would take me, and he would go. He put the footage on. And I'd yeah. be like, damn, man, are you serious? He goes, yeah, I look at you now and look at you after like three months, bro. This is what you damn. do. This is how, it's like a cycle. Like, you need to stay down with this because you, you know, I would join the gym right when I get out. Like, where I'm at here in this place. Yeah. Like, we, they, the COVID, they shut everything down. Man, we got, 
from these guys I had in here before. I've been in this spot four years. I'm an assistant manager, man. I assist these. I help the owners. We have 13 houses. I'm helping the owner, and and we, and, and we have weights in the in the garage. We set it up where we can work. Not everybody wants to work out, you know. Yeah. People are occupied in their head. Mm -hmm. You can't be in your head. You gotta. You have to, me, I just shouldn't say you have, I mean, me, I have to stay out of my head. I work out, I get up, you know, I drink some, you know, I try to, you know, alkaline my body. I try to keep healthy things in my body. I stopped smoking November 27th, not oh, filter camels. I smoked, yeah. that, that was a hard one, man. They say it's it's harder to kick to uh, nicotine than it is heroin, man. And it was it, it wasn't that hard for me. I just got, it was fucking me up. And they tried try the vape, I ain't into the vape, I can't vape. And it's like, it's like we're addicted to so much shit, man. We're addicted. Yeah. People are addicted to food. Like uh -huh. I can eat some crit, right? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I, I, I um was addicted to hardcore to food. You know what I mean? Like I had to go on a TV show to get off of that shit. You know what I mean? Like I was almost three hundred pounds. Like for real, like, that shit. Yeah, wake up in the middle of the night and eat fucking uh nutter bars and Oreo <laughs> yeah. cookies and yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like uh, it's like. Like, because of that, I don't want to blame the pandemic, but I've been doing that a few nights. But what I do is, like, if it ain't too hot, because it was hot today, like, later when, I, when, it, when, it, when it cools down a little, I'll go walk a whole hour. I put my headphones on, and I'll try to walk a straight hour. And in the morning, I work out, because, like, I'm 56 years old, man. Yeah. You know, so it's just like, when I was young, the metabolism would be burning. I wouldn't have, like, I have a little bit of a gut, but I'm old, man. As you get, I notice when you get older, the fucking it stays in certain places and it's just not gonna go away. I've tried everything. I've tried the vegan for a week. I've tried right now I'm just trying to eat clean, but every now and then you you know your body needs carbs and I work out a lot. So yeah. Uh, no, let, let me ask um at what point or how old were you when you decided like I gotta be clean now? Because you know what's crazy is I saw your story on on the uh that Netflix documentary, LA Originals. Right. And I was out I tripped out when I seen you like rolling with them looking healthy i was like oh, that's right like that that, that he, he's doing it i mean like like but because right. you know they, like you said they documented at first when you're outside on the couch and and, and doing all that and no then i was on a I, I was on a box <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then hey, wait, what's this? hey what was the one-liner what hey smitty what, what was my one-liner one -liner, suck a dick <laughs> <laughs> Smitty. He goes, you think you're famous for that one liner? I go, what one liner? Because I, I know I said a few lines. He's like, suck a dick. I go, oh, man. I was fucked up, bro. Yeah, they had me on a box. I remember that day well. Yeah. Hey, so, uh, uh, um, but, no, I'll tell you, it took years, man. And I told you, 1983, you know, there's an old thing in the AA and the NA and the 12 step program. They say, uh, once you, my mother took me to my first meeting, actually. She went into my barrio and picked me up, and she knew I was fucked up. And she goes, the same way I gave you the drugs, I want to give you, show you there's another way. And she took me to a meeting. It was on Sunday. I always remember at Cedar sinai Hospital. It was called the Sundowners meeting. It's a trip because I actually saw Rick James in that meeting. Oh, shit. When he was trying to get clean. Rick, Rick and his girl, uh, well, I forget her name. The one they say he... Uh, he burned the pipe? Not the one he burned, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, the one, the one was, they, yeah, well, that, no, it was another one. Yeah. No, they no, because they had. Yeah, I used to work that where where Rick was smoking. I actually used to work that hotel, which was the Hollywood Celebrity Hotel on uh, on Orchard and and Franklin. Man, I worked that. It was like the. It was man. I. That's why I'm trying to write this memoir, man. I got the memoir coming out, so that way I could you know touch on so many things. Because by me living in Hollywood, I I, I ran into a lot. I used, I used to get high with a. Uh, I got high a few times with some famous people. I don't want to put them out there. You know, yeah. it's, it's neither here nor there. We're trying to project another thing. So what happened is, uh, is uh, yeah, I found out about the program, and then I, I you know, and my mother, and, and my, my, you know, I'm not gonna say in 1983 after that first initial meeting that all my using was fucked up, because in 1983 I was still young, man. I hadn't been to the joint. <clears throat> I remember I started I, I started really doing heavy county time when the Olympics were in Los Angeles in 1984. Remember when they? So what yeah. they did was there was a thing called Operation Hammer. Daryl Gates put that on all his gang members. Man, there's a book out. It's called City of Courts. I recommend that book if anybody wants knowledge and history on Daryl Gates and how they cleaned up LA and it, it was bad back in those times too. Man, I've done so many research papers in college on that shit. 
there's a book out. I don't know the Arthur, the Arthur who wrote it, but it's called it's called City of Courts, and it and it focuses on Operation Hammer. And around that time, they started taking us. Everybody was going to jail then, even homies in Europe. They would yeah. get all of us. They were trying to sweep the whole because the Olympics were coming. And when you have tourists in the Olympics, you know, a lot of people don't realize Hollywood and L.A. and all the suburbs and all around. You know, we're a gang. We're the gang capital. Like they say on that one tape, Dove C tape, the gang capital. You know, we are the gang capital. So they cleaned up the streets and I started doing, you know, but I knew about the program. So what I would do is I'd get out and I, I would do, you know, a few violations or I'd do a soleta and get out. I happen to have five state numbers, and I don't say that like I'm a big man, but I, I, I lived, I'm, a, I'm, I'm what they call an a individual who was on the installment plan, the life for installment plan. <laughs> I have a, yeah, I, had, I got that installment plan thing. I, I never got a life sentence. Like the most time I ever got was, I think I got six. But like I would do like four or five years, like four in it, for a few years, and then I'd get out. And I wouldn't last but a few days because what they would do is they'd violate me and I'd go in. And they did something where you hang with a gang member. It's like your violations were an automatic year. So I did a few of those. Damn. So it's like I would get out. But let me get back to uh, how uh, I was introduced to. Um, it took a lot of time for me, man. I mean, I mean, the light finally went on in 2015. <clears throat> honestly, I can honestly let you know that, er that everything else, <clears throat> I was doing it for the wrong reason. I was doing it for somebody, either for my girl, my son, or or either my mother, God rest her soul, she died in 2000. I think, you know, like my mother died and, and you know, I have really, you know, I only have my son, a shout out to my son and, and Maddie out there and they're in Anaheim Hills, I want to shout them out because you never know if they could watch this. I don't know, you know, they seem to find everything at some point. Yeah. <laughs> but I, yeah, so they'll be like, you didn't say nothing, you give us credit, we need some credit. Yeah, well, they helped me along the way they showed. And at first I was doing it, because <clears throat> my girl said, hey, you're never going to see your son again. So we do it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Then we get into the, then what God does is, this time for me, I started doing the right thing. And then what God, see, because this is how it works. So if you're going to do the right thing, do it because you want to change. Do it for you. Because what happened with me is I did it and I finally got to a point and then I lost them. They were like, you know what? Like we made a decision that, you know, that, you know and I was like, all right, then I got them back. And, yeah. you know, without, you know, so it's like God's going to do, I don't want to preach or nothing, but it's all spiritual, man. It, you know, it's like everything happens through the spirit. You know, I, I'll let you know that it's not my doing. If you're watching this, I, I, I want to be honest and I want to let you know that, that if I take control of anything and do it the way I know how to do it, I wouldn't even be here talking to you. I believe that the spirit leads me in the right direction. Something that I can't see that's higher than me, a power greater than myself, man has me doing the right thing today. So what I did was I, I, I asked for help and I listened. I did everything that the ego and the self-centeredness and the selfishness tells us not to do. Mm -hmm. So I had to get out of the way, man. I had to believe in something that's greater than me, which I, I don't want to be like, oh, it's Jesus Christ. I believe in the Lord, man. I, I, I walk with God today with, with, with the Lord. I believe the Lord did, did what he had to do to, in order for us. He had to die on the cross to, to make, to like, make people believe something maybe it's not god maybe it's allah maybe it's hashem maybe it's what's that other one they call it you 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 or they don't know anyway yeah it's something else bro it ain't me i'm not here letting you know all these beautiful things about how i changed and how i came off of you know like i gotta answer like four or five dms every morning man trying to help people man there's people yeah. struggling i got people from australia talking about <clears throat> I'm on suboxone and you got to like, like, like the message that I'm projecting is you got to do what you got to do in order to get to where you got to get to. Les Brown even said, uh, you got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. Yeah. And I had to finally stand for something. And that was, that was changing my behavior. It was that simple. I can't be a scumbag no more. I can't do sneaky shit. <clears throat> I can't, you know, no disrespect to the women out there that might be listening. I can't fuck homegirl while the homies away on on vacation in the pinta you know even little shit like that because yeah. once we start doing dirty shit scandalous behavior then it, it we, we can't get out of ourselves man and i truly believe that before i put heroin or weed or any of the drugs inside of me i believe i had a fucking i had a i had a living problem and i didn't know how to live in society because i chose to want to go do that institution time 
And I felt those were my, my newfound family was the homies, man, the Sureños, man. I, I honestly can say, and if you're watching this, you know what, and you feel you don't have a family, man, you might have to sacrifice that thought, man. Because I'm letting you know, man, I've been shot 11 times, two times on each occasion. And I don't say that as a big, bad dude, man. I say that as, as a, I was a victim, man. There was just a, the homie was smarter than me. He came with a gun after yeah. I robbed him for a crack. Yeah, when you, when you rob the crack dealer, you're, you're putting yourself in a position to get shot. The crack dealer is supposed to come back and shoot me. Yeah. Like, he ain't a punk. Like, you ain't going to go up there and rob the crack dealer and not expect him to do something about it. So in 1992, I was shot six times. And Man. I really don't talk about that too much, but I'm letting these youngsters know I died. You know, I was at the DOA at Cedar Sinai, the same hospital Biggie lost his life. They shot me down there. You Damn. know, I, I died, man. I died. I was just doing, a, 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 you know, the podcast I share. And we got that. That's coming out in the next, you know. You know, keep your eyes open for all that because we're trying to let you guys on another level know that bullets over, uh, blessings over bullets, man. I'm trying to put a, a, some writing out there, which I'm trying to get. We're going to do that. Me and Smitty's going to help me with that. We're going to get on that. And we're going to have that out for you guys in November. And there'll be a way that you guys could get it, you know. And I'm going to try to make it, you know. I want to do it like, you know. You know but financially, I got to like, I got to put that out there where I could put a little money in my pocket. But that money's going to help people, man, where I'm at. I'm going to use that money to help people. You know, I give them like, like I, I'll help you. If, you're, if you want to get clean and sober, Put my thing on there and let these people know, man. I'm here in the community. I want to make a difference today. I want to help people. There's too many people out there. They're doing this, bumping the gums, and there's not enough uh, walking the uh, talk, walking the talk, man. I, I walk the talk. You know, I don't just sit on the sidelines. I get out in the community, man. I go out. You know, I don't want to blow my horn and be like this. We can't save everybody, man. Yeah. We're not going to be able to save the homeless. It's like I was homeless. I know how it is to be out there on drugs and on methadone and sitting out on Skid Row, and it's hot right now. Imagine the heat. They're down there on Skid Row, and all yeah. you want is a fucking Gatorade, man. You're thirsty, and the churches are going around there with water. There's not enough of that. But how about making a difference where they're not on the street? Like, let's – like, it'd be a miracle. Like, my, my vision is to – that you could drive down 6th and, and San Pedro and Stanford and Gladys. I, I vision – because I remember – when I was real, real young, man, I went down there just to trip, man. I must have been, never had probably been to Juvenile Hall. I just went down there one time, and those streets were empty. In yeah. the early 70s, people weren't out there like that. And even when I was out there, it's not like it is now. Like, I went over there the other day to go drop some of the green juice off to Esteban, man. Smitty took me down there. And a few, you know, every now and then we'll roll down there. We'll go through there because I, I, I know that's where I came from, and I, I never want to forget where I came from. And my heart goes out, man. It's like, I don't get a sickening feeling. I just know, like, I feel grateful that I'm on this side. But at the same time, when I see the people down there struggling, like, you got families down there. They have dogs, kids. And it shouldn't be like that, man. We're supposed to be the richest country in America, man. And something's not right. Something's broke, man. Yeah. And I tell you, I don't want to, like, blame the fucking president. You know, you know it's, it's like, we're, like, like, Look what happened. What's happening with the law enforcement, man? I mean, things are getting to this point because we need more people in the community. We need veteranos and OGs who have, who have flipped the coin or who have done something different. To There's never going to be enough, bro, cricket. There'll never be enough, man, of, of, of the capacity that we have to do. Nothing's never – because that's how society is in America. Society yeah. is where America – that <clears throat> Chumahan, he explained to me that he explained that it was a, uh, uh, it was, um, what do you call that? Uh, when you, like the other countries, like Britain and, and it, we were like the, uh, not the test, but before we got, and like in the, in, back in the day, we were the experiment. America was the experiment because yeah. we had no dictator, we had no king, we had no queen. You know, so we were the ones that were going to be the democracy was going to be like unity, freedom, you know, the, the Constitution, the amendments were the structure that we presented that they presented to our ancestors and put all this up. And it, it didn't go down like that. It went down on another level, man. Without me saying it, you can read between what I'm saying. It went on another level, all the way down to to uh, Cortez and, and the Aztecs and like. 
like the history of of everything it's like everybody's so into like power man like yeah. what was that saying they say jimmy like when the when the when the love for power outweighs when the power of love outweighs the love for power the world will no peace man it's like we have to show love like there's not enough loving man people are just at each other's throat and and we're living in a in a time period where there's resentments and there's animosity and we learn never, and, and, and if you have hatred in your heart because you see your neighbor doing better, something's wrong, man. There's yeah. not enough congratulating, you know. There's not enough yeah. participation, man. Like we have each person can do something different every day in a little way, and there's not mm -hmm. enough of that. It's like it seems like that the other side is outweighing what we believe in, man. And we 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 should be helping each other, man. People should come together right now. Because we're sure. living in a, like, like 2020 is a fucked up year, bro. Like, I didn't realize that we're sitting there. Like, they put on the news, and I'm like, I didn't watch the news for two months. Like, I only put on the news because we were down there in Hollywood yeah. on Saturday, the day that they, and they, when they went down there and lit that cruiser up, man, I was down there. Because we were doing some work up there in front of the church where they shot me. And it was like. Yeah, we're in. Yeah, you know, like it's it's gonna be some adjustments, some changes are definitely gonna have to be made. Oh yeah, and uh, uh, so now that you're, you mean you cleaned up, you're 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 helping the community now, and uh, do you sometimes just look back like, damn, that was a long, crazy journey, or or do you feel like you're right where you're supposed to be right now? There's always more work, bro. I'm never gonna feel like I'm right where I need to be, man. Because I, you should, the vision that I have is like. Like, I have to keep going forward. And in memory of Hector Morales, man, this house that I'm running, he left me this house. And it's like, I had the tools when I came in here. I came out of Phoenix House in Santa Ana. That's yeah. a behavior modification for people who don't know. I'm a mentor over there. I can't get in there to do my work. My work is like, if there was no COVID, Smitty, what would I be doing? Helping, right? Yeah, you so, over there about five hours a week. Yeah, I go like 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 I'm in the community, bro. Like, I, I pray to God every night. Every night I drop. Every morning, I you know, I... Yeah, I, you know, I, 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 you know, I reach you on my knees. I light a candle, and I pray to God. I go, hey, you know, even for my enemy, man, that the, that COVID doesn't hit none of us. All the good people, like let, like let that, let, let that thing, because like, 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 it, 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 even I talk to my my aunt, and I ask them. I go, hey, have you ever? They're like, not even in the depression that that was. Did we see what we're seeing now? So I pray, man, on my knees that. That this thing will get lifted and my predictions are little by little they're opening it and i don't know if that's good or bad my prediction is hopefully by the time i take my five-year cake my chip november 19 2020 i will have five years with no yeah. I'll find my mind-altering substances from the neck up and i happen to be off parole i gave my number up i lived on parole from all the way from the time i got out of the youth authority i kept that parole going for way over man i started like my first uh, state number was in a 1980 man and i kept that going so you feel you go 80 90 that's 10 9 80 to 90 uh 90 to uh 2000 and then 2000 to yeah so i was a good 18 18 years man maybe longer i don't know but i stood in the institutions like i started doing time young man you know like when i said sixth grade when i i gave the girl the marijuana in, in elementary school and her parents called the police and they raided my mother's house and my mother went to jail, man. But uh, you know, like, like I, I, I was like, man, I thank God that I'm not in the institution because the way I was thinking was like, I wouldn't be comfortable unless I would be on my way to jail, man. I would be, yeah. you know. And then I felt that, yeah, I went to Phoenix House. I did everything they told me to do. You know, I, I, a moment of clarity, which means uh, a light went on. It, it didn't just, you know, the, just pop on. I mean, it flickers. I still have character defects. I still struggle today. You know, but I don't act on it. I have choices, man. Like, I'm from the no matter what club. I don't get high no matter what. I don't care how rough it gets. I cannot put a substance in me. And, like, I hear these guys talking, well, it's getting hot. A beer sure would be good. No, I can't drink. Yeah. At the bottom of every beer glass, there's a fucking a shot of dope for me, you know? I can't yeah, I'm just not, drink. I'm, I'm an yeah. alcoholic. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I can't. I was right. passed away close to the liver, so I'm like, keep me right. away from that. I mean, like, that shit. Like you said, addictive personality. I know I got right. that too, so I stay away from that too. Right, I was on that. They gave me that, that, that not the anti furon but I got on the Hervani, man. I got on that program. It's a good thing. Like God, like I, I, I believe that that uh, we come to a point in our life, man, that 
that uh like 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 because you got to remember man uh, uh it's not my doing i just i just asked man i just, i'll tell you what i did different what helped me was a lot of people that guided me they were like you need to ask if you if you don't know something you have to ask and, and us being gang members and individuals with the machismo and the big ego and we're men we don't want to ask nobody for shit we think we know everything yeah and in reality we don't know shit man i didn't know anything and i didn't want to ask nobody i didn't want to be humble and, it, and it's to, to, you have to have humility man you have to you know like i like what the fuck is humility humility is is when is when you see somebody that's like trying to act like they have more or they're acting like they ain't you know like they're like like, like you ain't shit you have yeah. to like have a different attitude, man. It's hard, man. I'm not saying, you know, it just didn't happen for me automatically. I still trip out on a little, little, little shit here and there, but I just pray for people, man. If I start feeling bad or I think, cause I got two youngsters in here, man. And it's a, what we call it is a mirror reflection. Mm -hmm. And I try to lace these two kids, man. One is from uh, Anaheim up here, boys. He's from yeah. a barrio called boys. And the other fool is from a neighborhood I can't even pronounce. It's just like one of them hoods that turned, they were taggers and they turned hood, you know? So, yeah. but they're like, you know, and they, and, and, and they challenge me, you know? They're like, they fucking, I've had, I don't know how many times have I kicked, like told them I want to kick them. It's like, cause all I did, like I have to like go into my room and I go, man, the reason why you're getting upset with these kids is because you see something in them that, that you said, and I do, I can see it. I know when they're bullshitting. I know when they're yeah. trying to run game. I'm like, like I told homeboy today, I'm like, dude, like, come on, bro. Like, like you really, you think like, are you, are you I'm an idiot? Like, come on, bro. Like, you know, it ain't, no, you ain't going to bring the high nine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, he's trying to convince me that he wants to, you know, he's trying everything to bring. I go, listen, there's a men, no, we're men in here. There's older men in here. You're, and I'm not worried about you. It's just that I don't want to make the other dudes uncomfortable. We yeah. don't need them to be uncomfortable. The safety and the welfare of this pad, right, Smitty? The safety and the welfare of this house, out of all these houses in Orange County, I've been told that I run a pretty good spot, man. We'll all be 13. Right? Say it again. We'll all be 13 step when you bring it. You bring 13. They start about the 13 step is when they, everybody, see what happens. They get clean and sober and they try. They think, look, for the listener, you guys think that drugs is just 10% of the problem. You take the drugs mm -hmm. out of the equation, then you got to deal with. You know everything of jealousy, and then and then this is what happens with addicts. They they are uh, addicts. This is what happens to them. They uh they get clean, and then they want to get they get a few bowls of oatmeal in their stomach. They have a few bowel movements. They get off the drugs, and then their their brain starts working. Like oh, they look across the room and they see the hyena, and they're like oh no, and, and that's a no no man for at least a year, man. Like. And these dudes think, oh, I can handle it. I get the next thing you know, they're in the fucking spoon by noon, bro. Over the feelings, man. Like I've been telling these kids, if you guys could, like it's been proven, man. I've been here four years, man. And I can tell you, I've seen a lot of fucking shit. And they, then the reasons why they walk out that door and they go get high is behind romances and finances. Hmm. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what time is what time uh, we got? We got uh eight twenty one right now. So Man, uh, you got you got a good one out of me. <laughs> and before we All wrap right. it up, is there, is there anything else you 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 want you want to say before we wrap it up? Yeah, just a shout out to everybody out there that's in the struggle, man. It's going to be all right. And if you feel it ain't going to be all right, I'm going to say a prayer for you. It's called a silent prayer, man. After a moment of silence for the addicts and alcoholics and gang members and people with bad behavior that are suffering. I'm going to lead you out in the Lord's prayer. Uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from ego. For thou is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. Keep coming back. It works. Nobody told you they love you today. OG left. Big Frank loves you. Representing Hector's house and uh, cricket, gracias. Oh, no, no problem. That's Big Lefty right there. Uh, Big right. Frank, and you can see him on Netflix, LA Originals. We're gonna have his uh, Instagram right there, and we got his podcast right there. Appreciate you. Uh, hey, gracias, man. Anytime you need a, uh, you wanna, you wanna do a the second part. Just you know, if I got the time and for for the, you know, for 
for the kids, man. And it's, and it's all about you youngsters, man. This is the reason why we do it today, man. I do it be behind. The reason why I want to enlighten you gentlemen and let you know, man, ladies and gentlemen, that if you're struggling, man, it'll get better, man. You have to believe in yourself first. Just have yeah, some trust, does. believe me, because there's an old thing. It's just a simple thing. Trust the process. 